Anyone a musician? You know, play the triangle, play anything. Triangle? Yeah. You're not a uh, flute? Yeah, sax. Sax. Okay, whether you're musical or not, this is the music lesson. All music has a score, it has room for improvisation, and if it's good music, you'll have an audience. That's the music lesson. Same applies in business. You have things that you need to do that structure your work. I don't mean the organisational structure or the organogram, but you know you have routines, rituals, procedures, SOPs in pharmaceutical. Things that mean you can program things rather than relying on uh, doing it uh, every time differently. You have some room for creativity, and if you're a good business, you have customers, partners and clients. Seems straightforward enough. Good businesses get the balance right. So, uh, if we think back about uh, music for a moment, the goal of most music, music and musicians is to reinvent themselves several times, keep the audience they had, and get a new one. And I think the same applies. You don't have to like Madonna or David Bowie to sort of get this. It's not, it's not a discotheque. But they have, in fact, invent, reinvented themselves several times, as have some other people, uh, rather than being one-hit wonders, kept their audience and got new ones. So the same is true in business. So Virgin is a company I quite admire, but let's pick on a different bank. HSBC in, in Britain has a, an offshoot called First Direct Bank. And they're a telephone banking service. They have the same big data as all the banks. So they have exactly the same raw materials. They know about customers, everything about them. The difference is that First Direct actually use the information to relate to their customers rather than say, let's start at the beginning. What's your name? So if you compare them with Barclays, uh, First Direct were a fantastically good bank. Uh, bank. And they, you're, they're the only bank I know that you can use the word love and bank in the same sentence. So um, we'll, we'll dig into those perhaps in part two a bit more. Can you learn anything about leadership, therefore, from musicians? Yes, you can. Um, here's a little interview we conducted with Sheila E, talking about what she had learned from great leaders, in this case, her dad. And you were also, before, long before your involvement with Prince, you yourself were a musical director and doing all sorts of things, and you, mus you musically directed four prints. So how, what did you learn from actually trying to assemble the whole of a band and get them to play their parts, uh, you know, to, to harmoniously? I mean, that's an important well, thing, really. Yeah, that, that comes from watching my dad play. Yeah. He's been a leader of all of his bands, and, um, and with my uncle, with his brothers, um, he's pretty much been a leader. So watching him, how he deals with musicians, you know, uh, in rehearsals, and, and then when I finally went out on tour with my dad when I was 15, mm. and I saw him at work, and I uh, just thought, he's just a cool guy. My dad is so awesome to to watch him and how he treats people. He respects them like uh, he wants to be treated as well. Um, he's he's so early, you know, you say show up at a certain time. He's there at least 20 minutes early. Um, he's never late. He's on time. He's always prepared, and all of those things that I've watched him do uh, instilled in me, made me a better person, a musician, absolutely. So isn't that the real thing? There's plenty of great musicians out there, but the professionals are on time as well. <laughs> True. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so isn't that the thing, actually? Um, I meet loads of creative people, loads of entrepreneurs, and they go, oh, I haven't organised myself, and uh, I'm late. And actually, the professionals in all fields, it's not an excuse to be creative and then be lazy or retarded or late, um, you know, the reason Sheila E is working with Prince is because she's on time, and she learned that from her dad. So timeliness is part of being an entrepreneur and any, and she speaks a lot in the interview about sort of what she learned from her dad about treating other people. Uh, so that's really important, I think. There's a whole interview of this which I've just cut a little piece out of. The question is though, are you an orchestra conductor, a jazz musician, or a rock person? Because we can think about this in a slightly more developed way, that you know, perhaps in the beginning of the 20th century, you know, Henry Ford would have perhaps said, well, you can have any colour you like, but you, well, they all have to be black. So in, in the world of stability, you can have a stable business, you can have bureaucracy, you can have a central leader that sort of says, here's all the information you need to produce the cars, you all do the same thing. We've left that era largely, a lot of people actually say that uh, leadership is a bit like jazz, and I don't agree in this respect. That freeform jazz at the extreme is about everyone just 
diverging, creating, having a great time, and there's nothing coming out of it. Hewlett Packard, of course, started in that way in a shed, didn't they? There are two men in a shed. Uh, and of course, diverging endlessly is great for an R&D organisation, but eventually you have to sell something. And I heard someone say this morning, you know, where's your money coming for this product? Um, that usually requires a bit more structure than being on the edge of chaos. Um, you know, everyone's doing their own thing. This is like a hippie cult. Some jazz, of course, is not that extreme. But of course, most larger businesses usually have to have some structure and some room for the individual. And I, I'm choosing sort of rock and pop music as the analogy here. Did an interview with um, Prince's bass player recently, but we did one a little while back with his sax player. And this is, I said, would you mind jamming with me? And we had never played before. And just listen to this, you'll see that he's a master of what he does. <laughs> So this is a very quick music lesson. If you're not musical, don't worry, this is not going to hurt. Music always has inbuilt constraints in it. And in music there are 12 notes to choose from, you know, 12 that make up an octave. And often, you know, we do use even less than those to write a piece of music, which I shall say more about in a moment. But there are 12 notes in an octave, just know that. Most music has certain conventions, uh, we're used to harmonies, aren't we? Third part harmonies like the Beatles and various other things. Uh, if you listen to opera, you know, you, you'll know what, what harmony is even without knowing it. And the point of the matter is, if you want to be a creative musician, you can either bend, which is the adaptive step, or break the conventions. Demonstration. So, 12 notes. That's the 12 notes. But more, use, more usually, we're used to hearing ones that work together well, like this. Anyone listen to the sound of music recently? What's that? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Yeah. So we're used to songs that have this is the major scope. Um, so that's a, that's a convention. There is other there are other conventions. Uh, our blues player here was playing in the blues scale, where he was sort of um, using a different set of scales. Um, but similar, sort of three four notes uh, put together. And the point of the matter is to bend or break the conventions. Let's try an example. Trump. 
<laughs> but a gun against, yeah, I think, I think it's going the right, it's obviously 41 years ahead of its time. Come and sing it, please. You gotta snap back. Two, three, four. Come on. Thank you. 